Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Joining me now is Betsy App, Senior Pollster at Change Research. Betsy, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Brittany. It's a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to have you. And before we dive into the conversation, can you explain what uh, Change Research is? Absolutely. We are a public opinion research polling firm, and we work with forward-thinking clients uh, to assess public opinion in a variety of areas. I lead up our candidate coordinated side of our polling team. I work a lot with campaigns, candidates, issue campaigns, um, but we do a variety of public polling, public opinion polling. If you can remember, if our viewers can remember, back in 2016, there was almost this reckoning with polling. Major polls suggested that Hillary Clinton was going to win the presidential election. Obviously, that didn't happen. So how has uh, polling, in your opinion, changed since then? That's right, Brittany. I think that public opinion polling was in a state of crisis or in a state of flux uh, back in 2016 in the wake of the Trump victory that pollsters didn't necessarily anticipate. Change research was founded in uh, in that period of flux. Um, we, we saw that phone responses were in decline and online polling at the time was highly dependent on um, panel research. Um, and so change research innovated. Uh, we are simultaneously a tech company. We're a public opinion company. Um, we have a full stack engineering team who developed a propri proprietary methodology for recruiting poll samples that uh, gets around the many challenges of traditional polling methods. Our philosophy is that we need to meet uh, people where they're at um, and where they're at is constantly changing. And so that's our goal. Let's talk about where they're at because we're seeing this younger generation of, of voters coming up between millennials and Gen Z. And these two generations you could say are chronically online. So how do you poll them? How do you adapt to that generation? That's a great question. And I like to think of it as your everyone's in a different place, but everyone is online. Your grandma is on Facebook. Your niece is on Snapchat. Um, and your niece actually might be on Facebook, but only for Facebook Marketplace. So we really need to be innovating and getting in front of the eyeballs of people where they're at, especially younger people. When you're looking at voter tendencies as a whole, how are you seeing them changed generation to generation, let's say Gen X and boomers on one side and millennials and Gen Z on the other? There are so many trends um, that we're seeing. Uh, I think one of the biggest trends right now is that younger voters, um, especially people under 35, are more diverse. And I don't just mean racially and ethnically diverse. They're more diverse in terms of their gender identity and sexual orientation. In fact, we're finding that a third of voters under the age of 35 um, identify as being members of the LGBTQ community and about a quarter of that, about 25% of younger voters identify as bisexual. Um, other groups like Gallup, other public opinion um, research groups are finding that that number is slowly increasing. Um, we're also finding lots of trends um, in the partisan space where there's a huge gender gap um, between young women and young men, with young women being on a plane of their own. Um, they're very progressive. They identify, more than 60% of them identify as being liberal or progressive, whereas that number is less than 50% among young men. How is voter sentiment with young voters? Do they feel excited about this upcoming election? Do they feel disenfranchised? What does that look like? They have, their vote motivation is far lower. Um, so just as an example, among voters under the age of 35, only 50% of them that they are 10 out of 10, very motivated to vote. Compare that to voters over the age of 50, it's 80 plus um, percent saying that they're very motivated to vote in the, in the November 2024 election. 
they're feeling bored uh, with the candidate options that they have, and they're not particularly excited about um, who they're seeing at the top of the ticket. What issues, when you're polling younger voters, do they care about most? What is driving them to get out and vote? Younger voters are very economically sensitive right now um, com compared to older voters. So inflation, the rising costs of essentials like groceries and gas, that's really important to younger voters right now, as is the high cost of housing. They're spending a lot of their income on rent um, and if they're lucky enough to own a home on, on their mortgage. Um, so they're very economically sensitive. Beyond that, they're really interested in protecting the climate. Um, so they're interested in combating climate change. They're also very interested in um, student debt cancellation and uh, reproductive freedom generally. When you're looking at this younger sect of people heading to the polls, does anything surprise you as a expert pollster? Yes, I am surprised by just how dissatisfied younger voters are with Joe Biden. Um, objectively, the Biden administration is uh, perhaps the most progressive on paper, but younger voters are not, uh, they don't agree with that and they don't see it. Um, they're very dissatisfied with the president right now. They are really surprisingly open to voting for third party options because they're just not happy with Joe Biden or Donald Trump as their presidential choices right now. That's really interesting because you're seeing a lot of uncommitted votes across the country, people rather voting for no one opposed to Joe Biden. Obviously, that's not the majority. But when you're saying you're surprised at the dissatisfaction, do they do these younger voters want President Biden to be more progressive? Do they think he's too moderate? They do. Yes. And they're not seeing the progressive things that he is doing, which isn't a problem with younger voters. It's a problem with communication. Right. Um, I think that they're not uh, hearing what the Biden administration has been doing. And I think uh, Joe Biden and his team have been addressing um, that lack of information or lack of understanding of what the Biden administration has actually been doing by getting into new communication channels um, like TikTok, for example. Um, and I would be uh, surprised if we didn't see more of that in the months leading up to the election. This is a really important constituency um, to get motivated uh, to actually turn out and vote and vote for Biden. That's really interesting that you say the Democrats have a messaging problem because strategists I've talked to have shared similar sentiment here. So you're saying this is an important group of people. How do you get them excited to go out to go vote? And do they usually radically change their mind before an election? I think uh, they don't radically change their mind or change their position on issues, but I do think you can influence how motivated younger voters are um, in the months leading up to an election. I think it's not just a messaging problem, it's also a messenger problem. Um, and the Biden administration needs to be looking for surrogates um, to get this younger generation interested in voting. Would a younger person be the person that younger people would look look up to? I'm thinking about Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She used to, uh, um, she probably still does, Instagram Lives to speak directly to voters. Is that something that younger voters uh, gravitate to? I think they are looking to young leaders like AOC, as you say, um, but they're also interested in people who share their positions. I think Bernie Sanders, for example, not a young person, I think you would be fine to acknowledge. Um, it, it really captures the minds of young voters because of his issue positions. As a pollster, we're sitting here right now, eight months to an election, a presidential election that is a rematch of 2020. What is on your radar? What are you looking for? 
I'm looking at the top of the ticket and all the way down the ballot. Um, I think that younger voters, they may not be satisfied with their two options at the top of the ticket. Many of them may vote for a third party candidate. Um, I am interested in how the campaigns communicate about uh, their opponent. So I think that uh, both candidates need to make the case that their policies are better for younger voters uh, than their opposition. Um, and it's really about who has the best uh, policies uh, that are going to speak to younger voters' top issues like rising costs. That's really interesting because some strategists I've talked to have said this is going to be a largely pessimistic general election. It's going to be the two parties saying I'm better than that guy. Is that something from your experience that younger voters care about or do they care about more? Hey, what can you give me? How will my life under you be better than under him? I think that's the fundamental challenge, Brittany. I think that they need to, the candidates need to make that connection with voters to say, what is their forward looking vision? Both of them have a term of being president under their belts. So I think a lot of younger voters are familiar with what those policies look like. I think they need to project their forward looking vision for what they are going to do on younger voters' top issues. Betsy App, thank you so much for your insights. I really enjoyed the conversation. Likewise, thank you, Brittany.